Hi, it's John with PadPrinters.com. We're going to talk about ink mixing. So, what do we need for ink mixing? We have, obviously we need ink. This is a two component ink, meaning that it has a hardener added, so hardener's in here. And then we have thinner. You have a scale that you need so you can measure the amount you're putting in by weight. Mixing cup, plastic PET cup that won't melt when we put thinner in there. Disposable plastic pipette for adding thinner. And a couple of stir sticks, big stir stick, small stir stick. So when you get your machine and your Tosh ink comes in new, the cans are gonna have a locking ring around the top. It's kind of difficult to see here, but let me get it started. So this is a new can of ink. And there's a little lip right there where you have this locking ring on top. You get that started, and then if you just use even those pliers, you can take this guy off and just discard that. So that's how you open your cans initially. Whenever you're mixing ink, it's important that uh, whenever you take ink out of the cans, you wipe the lip of the can off after you get done taking ink out so that you can get the lid back on tightly. For new cans of ink that come in or cans of ink that have been sitting on your shelf for a while, you want to make sure that you stir them all the way down to the bottom. Different colors will settle, like white for example. Uh, that pigment's a little heavier and so the, the colors will settle somewhat and you want to make sure that you mix it up well to make it homogenous. Also, you'll notice that different colors, these are packaged by weight. So in the case of black, for example, it's gonna fill the whole can up. White, by comparison, weighs a lot more. So when you get a can of white, it might only be half to maybe two thirds of the way full. That's because of the different weight or specific gravity in different colors, which is why we weigh uh, all the components when we're mixing ink using a scale instead of mixing by volume anytime you're working with pad printing ink. So for ink mixing, first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna open up a can of black. You'll notice I'm wearing a black jacket and black gloves. So that way if I spill it, you'll never be able to tell and it looks exactly like I know what I'm doing. But I've been mixing ink for, I don't know, 30 years and this is the way I do it every time. So I'm using a screwdriver. This can's already been previously opened. Get that out of the way, set my lid aside and I'm gonna go ahead and stir this up. This is a ink Tosh STB, type STB black. And this is a two component ink, meaning again, like I said, uh, it's gonna require to have a hardener added for maximum mechanical and chemical resistance after it's completely cured. So for the 90 millimeter ink cup on the Micro 90, you need to have a minimum of 60 grams of ink. So I'm gonna turn my scale on here <clears throat> so my scale is at zero, I've, I've included the weight of the cup, and I'm going to take my tongue depressor here and get 60 grams of ink into the cup. You can pour it in with some colors. This happens to be um, a high opacity ink, so it's a little bit thicker. I got the wrong, okay, I've got 12 grams so far. Keep adding my ink here. <clears throat> I realize this is somewhat time consuming, but you need to do it right every day because if you start mixing ink without following your process, just on the fly without knowing exactly what you're doing every day, you're going to get all kinds of different results in printing and invariably wonder why. And probably the way that you mix your ink is gonna be the root cause of problems you're having on machine. So, almost there. And we're good. So, the ink is in there now. I'm gonna set that aside. Second component is the hardener. So with STB ink, the ratio of hardener is four to one by weight. I put 60 grams of ink in this cup. Now I need to use 15 grams of thinner. So I'll tear my scale back to zero. 
when you get these out of the out of the box new you'll notice the cap has a little puncture lip on there so when they're new and you open these all you have to do is take the cap off turn it over and punch a hole in the top uh, this also comes in liters the tubes are a lot easier to use because you can just meter out the amount that you need. Uh, when you get a, a liter of it, it comes in a can like the ink, and the stuff's kind of like Malo Blue, so unless you get it completely sealed or transfer it to a different container for dispensing, it dries out and you never get to use the whole liter. So you can buy it either way. I recommend using the tubes, a little more expensive but a lot easier. So 60 grams of ink, 4 to 1, 60 divided by 4 is 15. So we're going to add 15 grams right here. It looks like a lot when you're adding it into STB. There are other inks. Um, some of those ratios vary. Some inks are 10 parts to one. Some inks are 20 parts to one. Other inks can use different ratios uh, all the way up to and including one to one for inks that are very, very hard after they're cured and used on things like engine covers and so on. So now I've added my hardener. And I want to make sure that before I add thinner, I mix this up thoroughly. It's important that you mix the hardener with the ink first before you add thinner, because if you add thinner directly on top of the hardener, it can cause what's called solvent shock. And that means that the ink loses its hardening or uh, printing properties much faster. So in this case, this ink has a pot life of six to eight hours. The pot life is the time that the catalyst that I just added to the ink is working to make the ink film that's printed as hard as possible. It's a chemical reaction that takes place with water vapor in the air. So the reason there's a range on the pot life is because when the humidity is higher, the pot life is shorter. When the humidity is lower, the pot life is longer. So I mixed that in there thoroughly and I make sure that I've got it all mixed well, and then I wanna put my thinner in there. So this ink, like any pad printing ink, they're gonna say 10 to 20% by weight. I found that with dark colors, I usually start at about 10%. With lighter colors that are really thick and heavy like white, I'll maybe start at 12% by weight. So doing the math here, um, we have 60 grams of ink, 15 grams of hardener for 75. So 10% of 75 is 7.5. So I'm gonna add my 7.5 grams, zero out my scale. And like I said, these little pipettes, they hold about two grams on average, which is exactly what my scale is telling me. So two, four, Six, and this is why these are nice, bing, seven. And this scale is only accurate to full grams. So I don't have tenths of a gram accuracy on this scale. Now I'll mix this up thoroughly. And you can stir uh, ink manufacturers. Some will recommend that you let the ink sit for up to 15 minutes just to make sure you get a lot of the bubbles and things out of there. I've never found that really to be necessary. I usually mix it up and put it directly into the ink cup. So it's difficult to know. Some people like to use viscosity measurement. We get asked all the time, do I need a viscometer? Do I need to have um, one of those timing sticks where you dip it in here like this and there's holes drilled in it and you wait until the hole's clear counting your seconds to know how thick it is. Uh, other people use something called a Ford cup to measure viscosity. Viscosity measurements really aren't necessary because again, black weighs a different, has a different specific gravity than white, which is different than red, which is different than blue. So it's difficult to say that this given viscosity is gonna work for your application. It also, the amount of thinner that you're gonna use also depends somewhat on your artwork. If you're printing a big bold area, for example, big solid image, the ink dries from the outside edges in, so you want to use less thinner so it dries faster. Whereas if you're printing very fine copy, like maybe the registration mark or something on a 
on a tiny part. You want to have the ink thinner so that you can pick up those fine details because they're so small they're going to want to dry quickly. So, you know, measuring viscosity versus putting in a weight of thinner and determining what that's going to be is really the best way to mix the ink. So that's it for mixing ink. If you have any questions, you can email me at john, J-O-H-N, at padprinters.com. Thanks.